Hi, I'm Catalina Maria Johnson on behalf of Beat Latino and ChicagoMusic.org. I'm talking to Ramon Perez Prieto. Hola, Ramon, how are you doing? Hola, Catalina, how are you doing? Ramon Perez Prieto from the famous pioneering electronic Afro-Peruvian collective, DJ collective, Nova Lima. But uh, you're not in Lima, Ramon. You're starting to visit us, right? Oh, yeah. Well, right now, this time I'm in Miami just for a while. But yeah, I'm coming back to Lima, though, because we're about to start a European tour and the U.S. tour. So I'm getting back down there on the 11th. We're going to start with a concert on the 13th in Lima. And then on the 17th, we're, we're flying off to Europe. We got a concert in Berlin, then Spain, and then we're coming back to, to the U.S. Wow, and then back to us, uh, to Chicago, finally, I think. That's right. Our home in Chicago. We love Chicago. <laughs> we, it's a regular. Great. Yeah, it's really a, uh, your concerts here have always been very, very special. Um, so tell me now, how, how long has it been that uh, Nova Lima has been together? A, about a decade or so? It's been, well, officially our first album came out in 2003, but actually the collective started, uh, we started making uh, music together since the year 2000. No? And before that, we had uh, other bands, rock bands. Before that, that we had played in. So, actually, the four of us, the, the, the producer, have been playing for more than 25 years already. Wow. Well, okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you started as kids in school, right? You, some of those bands were like, you know, school bands or you know, exactly, you were, yeah. yeah. We, we were teenagers. No? So, in this time of you now over a decade that you've. Uh, from when you started, when you were like in distant corners of the globe, right? You were like Barcelona, Hong Kong, Lima, and you started this sort of uh, Afro-Peruvian, uh, almost recovery or recuperation of the material through making it accessible and electronic and making everybody really um, kind of happy to, uh, to dance to it. Tell me a little bit about kind of what you've learned along the way in the terms of the process. What do you think are the major lessons? Uh, what, what's uh, Nova Lima gleaned from these, uh, from these years of, of doing that kind of music? Well, uh, when we started the project, actually, the, the, the main idea was to bring these uh, traditional afro peruvian rhythms to a modern uh, sound and uh, actually to make it more attractive to younger crowds because uh, Afro-Peruvian in its primitive or traditional way was starting to get lost in our own uh, community you know, in, in Lima. So this was the main idea and I think that what we've built up since has been a, 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 a new younger crowd uh, proud of his legacy, you know, of, of the Afro-Peruvian legacy we have uh, in, in the music in Peru and also, uh, uh, for the time being, and uh, the places we've been around, uh, a lot of comments have arised like, uh, we're a band made out of white guys with black guys, so there's an also a, a racial message, message you know, on, on all this, and also a social message. So I think that uh, in all, you know, in all these years we've been playing around, uh, I think we've built up, uh, besides recovering the Afro-Peruvian heritage we have on the music, there's also also a, a social message, you know, going on of, of how the world should be, you know, uh, just uh, living together in harmony, no matter if you're Chinese, black, white, or whatever, you know, I think that's, it's, it's been a, a, a message that we didn't think about it really when, when we started making the project, but eventually it has come up like that, you know? Well, certainly in Chicago, uh, the audiences you pull are from all over the place. I mean, ethnicity-wise, um, age-wise, it's it's been it's always a, a really interesting mix in the audience too, which is which is very nice. But coming back to that message, um, you know, which wasn't intentional at the beginning, the kind of the Afro-Peruvian and the kind of the the mixture you've all, that's always been present to me in your music, not just in the choice of the songs, but. Uh, for example, your last album, Carimba, uh, is, uh, why don't you explain? I know I, I read about it, but uh, the, how the, what the title means. Oh, exactly. Well, uh, yeah, the Carimba was the, the, the this uh, metal uh, uh, used to mark all the slaves 
just as they mark the cattle, you know. So uh, a little bit, uh, we use the name just to be to create an awareness, you know, of how brutal and savage we, we used to be back in the days, you know. So we always try to bring all this stuff, so you know, to to, to create an awareness, you know, of, of how we've been and what things we should be correcting, you know, or, or, or making better. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, the, you know that. I always think of the music too as as marked by that experience. And certainly, you've just uh, an album just came out, Diabolic Remixes, um, with with a lot of the songs from precisely that album from Karimba um, remixed. Now, tell me a little bit about how that project come about. Did you choose the DJ producers that did the remixes and the songs, or was that like a a collaboration or how did that all happen how did diabolic remixes happen well uh to start with the uh, uh we've we've always tried to do our mixed album after making our own because i think uh in the same way we do versions sometimes of old songs it's really nice to see how uh, other producers and djs that have been our influence you know mm -hmm. uh, when, when we've been making music how they would do versions of our own songs and uh in this particular album, uh, we got to choose all the, the DJs and the mixers and producers that that, that uh, were uh, invited to this, this album. And uh, actually what you do is that w w when you reach out to somebody, to just uh, let them choose what song they like from the album. You know? uh, so uh, they, they need to be comfortable with the, with the track they're making, obviously. and. Uh, as I told you, we, we, we got lucky, we got to handpick everybody in this album and uh, we had a little delay uh, on the release, although, but finally came out and, uh, well, regarding the name, actually, uh, when we were about to release the album, as usual, we had a problem with the cover, <laughs> with the cover of the album, that is the last thing you always think about, you know, and... Uh, we decided to do the same cover as Karim, but since it's a remix album, you know, and have it in red. And the reason why it was called Diabolic was because there were four remixes of the di of Diablo. No? The Diablo. I was going to say, you let them choose, but they chose, a lot of them chose Diablo. <laughs> exactly, you know, so that was the, actually, that's, that's how the, the, the name came up, you know. And uh, also, I think that uh, nowadays, you know, uh, getting a little bit into... <laughs> Maybe a sole perspective of the of, of the of the name. I mean, uh, even if you mention diabolic, it doesn't mean you you, you mean evil. You know, so it was a little bit of a, I don't know, just a, a little playing around. Uh, some of the guys in the band actually were, hey, why are you going to use diabolic? You know, and I, I, I and actually I I remember the name of uh, of the album from. From the Rolling Stones, no, their satanic majestic request, you know. So <laughs> it was a little bit of that feel, you know. So, hey, why not? Diabolic, you know. Yeah, just playing around, you know. <laughs> it, I like the album very much, and and I'm also happy to. Uh, I was happy to hear a track, a new track from Nova Lima, uh, Payande. And oh, yeah. I thought that I looked that one up because right away from the words, I mean, if uh, you know Spanish, you hear. The uh, you get the sense that it's an older song, uh, that it's a uh, again a, a, a reinterpretation of some of that Afro-Peruvian heritage because you hear a woman saying, you know, uh, my mother was a slave and I was born with the same mark of the slave. And so I started looking it up, and and it's a it is an older song indeed. So it how is. did that happen? Tell me a little bit about how you chose Payande. Well, uh, this song actually was supposed to be in the Caribbean. Right? Uh, but it was left out because the Karimba album was getting a little bit with too many slow songs, you know, uh, slow rhythm songs. So uh, when we released the Karimba album, we were supposed to have this track uh, available online, just to do like a bonus track. But we, were getting, we didn't get to do that. So uh, that was the reason why we included it in the, in the remixes as a, as, a, as a bonus track. And actually this song uh, goes really way back. Uh, it's from a, a Colombian poet that used to live in Peru together with a Peruvian uh, poet and that's where the lyrics come from. And the singer is Rosita Guzman who is a really uh, old classic uh, vintage singer you know from the Afro-Peruvian uh, culture back in Lima. 
she's now really old actually and, uh, and the reason why we had her uh, singing this song was a little bit of a tribute to her because you know she's in her old days and she sings a lot nowadays but she hasn't been recording for a while and this was the main reason why we wanted to do this this track and well it was included in the remixes because it's a really nice song and it was getting left out you know so we wanted to put it on the, on the remixes as a bonus track and at the end you know, it's really kind of awkward though because uh, the whole remixes album is more into a dance floor and and going and when you listen to Payan Day you're going back to the Karimba style more or less no? more, mm -hmm. more of our normal non uh, clubby style no? but I like it's nice it's, it's a beautiful track and I'm glad that you clarified who the singer was because I couldn't figure it out I knew it wasn't Milagros who sings with you I knew it was an older mature voice so yeah. Rosita Guzman that's, Rosita Guzman. that's yeah. great she's a know. star she's a star down there in the yeah. wow very well known now, Ramon, I know that uh, also thinking about some of these older songs that you are uh, bringing into your repertoire, into Nova Lima's repertoire, I read somewhere, I think it was you, has a very famous family history in terms of ethnomusicologists and um, researchers of Peruvian music. Is that true? That's actually Rafael. Oh, that's Rafael's Rafael. Rafael's grandmother. Okay. Yeah, Rafael's grandmother. Uh, she used to write all the, since this music, afro Peruvian music has been passing through generations, but only being taught and sung, uh, uh, Rafael's grandmother or great-grandmother, I'm, I'm not really sure if it was grandmother, yeah, great-grandmother, I think, uh, she actually wrote down all the, all, uh, a lot of these afro Peruvian tracks and registered them, so, so they weren't, uh, they didn't get lost. And uh, that was the main, uh, the main thing of, uh, of her. I, don't, I, I, don't, I can't remember the name right now of her, but uh, she did a, a, a real good contribution, you know, to, 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 to make this uh, uh, culture, the Afro-Peruvian uh, music, uh, make it still uh, recorded or, or registered, you know, in, 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 in pentagrams, actually, you know. So uh, that was a, a real good contribution. Toromata, there are a lot of tracks that, were, were written down by her that that, that really contributed not to this, uh, so this music wasn't lost. You know? Wow, Toro Mata, yeah, that's, you yeah. know, gone around the world too. Uh, Toro Mata, Conche Perla, among a lot of those. Wow. Uh, th those are the two that ring my bell, but she wrote, oof, a lot, a lot, a lot of this music. Yeah. Wow, wow, yeah. wow, wow. Uh, so now, um, where to Nova Lima? <laughs> You've been on all four four corners of the globe, you've come together back in Peru, you've brought in other musicians. What, what's, the, what's the next step? Where, well, right now, as I told you, we're getting ready for, for our European tour, our US tour too. And uh, after that, we're already recording a new album, uh, because it's a long process actually. Uh, there are uh, around five songs being made at this time, because uh, uh, we, we would really like to have a, a, a pre of the next album around September or maybe October. Uh, and uh, we should be have the final album, the next album, around June next year. No? That's our main objective. And uh, regarding the music, it's as usual, no formula. We just do a, a little bit of follow our, our gut feeling, you know, and uh, we like to experiment a lot. Uh, Every, every year that passes by, we meet new people, we meet new musicians, and this contributes a lot to the, to the sound of Nova Lima because we usually invite all these musicians and, and new people we meet around uh, through the tours uh, to collaborate with us you know, in the album. So I guess that the new album is going to have, a, have a, I have the feeling that it's going to have a fresh new, new sound uh, because from this time, uh, uh, from Karimba, you know, it's been almost uh, a year, it's going to be two years now. Right. And, uh, well, eventually I think uh, we keep on, uh, our sound keeps on this evolution, constant evolution, since we started uh, making albums with, with the project, and uh, that's our main objective, you know, to, to, to keep a new, fresh, fresh sound and uh, to eventually bring it up live and, you know, go around the globe playing our stuff that is what, what we love, actually, you know. 
Um, one la well, one last question. Um, I know that uh, I've read that that in fact you did accomplish what you set out to do, which was to um, make people aware of their heritage um, in Peru and and kind of proud of it in a way that they hadn't been uh, proud of it before. Um, is that have you gotten that direct feedback? I mean, from from audiences or people have people told you, you know, I, I never knew this existed, or if I did, I I didn't think it was, you know, my heritage, or I, how, how do you think, uh, I mean, have you gotten some direct feedback about that? And the second part of that question is, do you think um, music has that, a special power to kind of like make us kind of recognize and admit parts of our, parts of our own cultures and, and give, them, uh, give them the respect that, that they are due? Well, uh, yeah, actually, locally in Peru, uh, a lot of uh, people of my generation and younger generations obviously are listening now to, to, to Nova Lima and uh, they wouldn't go to Peñas or listen to the Afro-Peruvian music anymore in its traditional way because that was something that we used to listen when we were little kids. I mean, I would go maybe to the kitchen of my, my grandmother's house, you know, and the radio was on and they would be listening to Afro-Peruvian music. Obviously, I, I would rather listen to the Beatles or Led Zeppelin or whatever, you know. <laughs> so that's changed a little bit, and uh, and actually, our generation, as I was telling you, now is much more familiar with this Afro Peruvian uh, music and, and rhythms. And regarding uh, uh, touring, you know, uh, all the places we've been, sometimes we've had the surprise, and they 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 they, they even told us, you know, I I didn't even know that in Peru there was a black culture, you know. I mean, so. I think uh, the message and the, 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 the how do you call it, the, 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 our, our, our job of, you know, uh, of, of making this music uh, popular, not popular, but put it in an, on, 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 on a scope, you know, globally, has actually succeeded, you know, and, 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 and yes, uh, I think uh, the rhythms, the black rhythms actually, not, not only the Afro-Peruvian, but the black rhythms their, uh, itself, you know, they, they move the people, you know, I mean, uh, it's almost impossible to, to stand there and not move your feet, you know, so, so I think that uh, regarding your second question, you know, if it brings you back to your, to your culture, I think, uh, in my own personal opinion, we all come from the black culture, that's my opinion, you know, so I think that whenever you listen to this black music, these rhythms, you know, and, and you start moving your feet, it's natural. You know, it's something that you don't, <laughs> you don't even plan. So uh, yeah, I think that brings you, it brings you back to your old ancestral, you know, past. You know, in, in some sort of way. You know? Yeah, who we are, who we all are. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's been a treat uh, to be talking to Ramon Perez Prieto, and from Nova Lima, who will be visiting us in Chicago very soon. And we look forward very much uh, to the visit, Ramon. Um, so uh, safe travels and. Uh, Looking forward to seeing you here. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Catalina. And yes, we're, we're looking forward to, to go to Chicago. We love that crowd and we're, we're eager to get there. Yeah. Gracias. Hasta luego. Thank you very much, Catalina.